And after she leaves his house, she becomes the wife of another man, and her second husband dislikes her and writes a certificate of divorce, gives it to her, sends her to her house, or if he dies, then her first husband who divorced her is not allowed to marry her again after she has been defiled. Oh, this was in The Chosen. Remember, he would not give her the divorce, the woman. Was it the woman at the well? It was the woman at the well. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. And yeah. she begged for it, and he said no. Right. Yeah. So he, he actually turned her into an adulteress. But God told her, Jesus told her to go back mm -hmm. and be the wife and leave that man that she wasn't married to. Yep. Yeah. So a couple things here. Pardon? Is there any place that discusses the fact that the wife finds the husband displeasing? <laughs> Actually, there is. Um, I can't remember what, it's a book we read previously, but if the, if the, if the man does something uh, indecent, like maybe he charges interest, loan interest, or if he does something against God, the woman can divorce him. And those are really the only two reasons, two reasons, that um, the woman can ever divorce a man. If he does something illegal or against God. So, yeah, God... Pardon? Not if he's just displeasing. Correct. Right. Right. Correct. Actually, it was so bad, Jeanette, that um, <coughs> a man could divorce a woman for over-salting his food. <laughs> Which is valid, right? Right. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Here's <laughs> our brick when you need Yeah, really. Yeah. He's a sweetie, I don't think so. Right, right. And, and the thing is, Gary brings up a good point. This is a, a divorce wasn't a legal issue back then. It was a, an issue with society. So each person could take care of their own certificate of divorce. And actually, the certificate of divorce was uh, for protection of a woman. Because if she was to marry another man without the certificate of divorce, she'd be an adulteress. And then they would stone her. So actually, this was a good thing. And um, they had uh, elaborate wedding celebrations, but because uh, they would last like four or five days, wherever we get loaded, but um, <laughs> like not a lot of courting or anything else. Hey, Janet. Absolutely, absolutely. I, yes. I hope I'm not too disruptive, but having two Gary's is that that one of our aims of increasing our attendance? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gary invited himself, so that's good. Good well, discipleship. Ne next week, <laughs> we we, we, we could have hope, three or four Gary, and well, we hope that, Gary that Gary and yeah. Garrett don't there start fighting. Gary and Larry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if, if you guys start fighting, I'm going to have to break you up. <laughs> so, they're, they're just like each other. They probably will. They dress alike. What, Gary? That Gary, you've got to keep an eye on these weird. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, okay, and, and verse 4 makes sense, too. Um, the first husband who divorced her is not allowed to marry her again. Because he didn't like her the first time, right. why is he going to like her the second time? You know? So, anyway, just once again, God's applying logic. But a divorced woman could remarry. Oh, yeah. They could. Yeah, yep. Yeah. She might not be able to survive if she wasn't. Even. Right, right. Because remember, widows, um, and actually women, without a man or a son, they have nobody to support them. So yeah, they would want to, they would want to get married as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like um, you know some denominations would say that once you're divorced you can never get remarried again in that in that certain church. Right. No, the Jews didn't look at it that way. Um, you mean then I have to pay money to go back to that church? Just yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> if you got it in all right. Right. Yeah. Because God, you know, God washes things clean with cash. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. 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 Y
no matter who they are, they have to follow the laws so the whole society can stay healthy. Because remember, um, when Miriam and Aaron went against Moses, God made Miriam um, have leprosy. And then he was, uh, Aaron wanted to cure her immediately. God says, nope, out of the camp she goes. So even Miriam. Just, just kind of interesting, but leprosy is not very contagious at all. And like husbands and wives can sleep literally for years together without getting it from one another. It's real, it takes a long time to get, and it's not very contagious. And I know they're talking about a lot more than just love. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, um, that's a good point because they talk about leprosy, but they're talking about any skin disease because they really didn't. They really didn't know. Did the, I? I guess I don't remember ever <clears throat> knowing or reading about where she got leprosy. Yeah. Did that happen yeah. during the time that? Aaron let him build the, no. the false god? Well, it, it happened afterwards. Um, it happened in Numbers chapter 12, verse 10. Oh, okay, so yeah. I can read that. Yeah, so read Numbers 12, okay. and it'll tell you when, when Miriam and Aaron said to Moses, why are you the leader? We did all this great stuff too. Okay. And God says, no, you didn't. <laughs> and he straightened her out. Okay. So um, it, didn't, it didn't happen while... Moses was away getting the Ten Commandments. No, no. It, it happened a little bit later. Okay. And uh, I remember when we were reading Numbers 12, uh, you know, a couple people said, well, why did Aaron get off so easy? You know, why was Miriam published, uh, punished so severely? And that's because Aaron was the high priest at the time. Okay. And if he had to leave camp for seven days, then he couldn't fulfill his duties in the temple. I'm sure he had guilt, too. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure God took care of it. Yeah, he was pretty. Yeah. And so we aren't going to refer to that as putting woman in her place, right? No, no, we would never do that. Uh, <laughs> no, Richard, we are not. You can slug him. Uh. If, if, if we if we want to leave this space alive, yes. considering we're severely outnumbered, I, I hardly agree. Well, we would never say that. <laughs> I didn't think we would. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. <laughs> Probably not even think it. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's gone. Okay. Forever. Yeah. And I, I always tell people, um, when, when, when I do something that's respectful of a woman, I said, well, I've been married for almost 40 years, and I had a mother before that. Mm -hmm. So I'm very well trained. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, verses 10 through... Um, 13. So, if you take a cloak as, um, as a pledge for a loan, so the guy says, okay, I'll give you my cloak uh, as collateral for a loan. Make sure you return the cloak by sunset so that your na neighbor may sleep in it. Um, remember, back in Exodus uh, 22, we found out that the cloak uh, they probably only had one because they were expensive to make and it served not only as their coat but their blanket and their knapsack. They would load their stuff in there and, and carry it around so the cloak was really, really important to a person. So God said, don't miss you, don't abuse anybody. Same thing with verses 14 and 15. You, you have to Pay your people. If you're going to hire somebody, if they do the work for you, you have to pay them. Otherwise, you're stealing their labor. Uh, parents are not to be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their uh, parents. Each person will die for their own sin. And this goes to the, what God laid out before, that the penalty must fit the crime. So the parents didn't do the crime, so they don't have to pay the penalty. And, and also, uh, the only people that don't have to die for their own sins are us. Because Jesus took care of that for us. Where in the Bible did it talk about the children suffering for the crimes of their parents? Yeah, that was, that was earlier in, um, I think, Exodus, Gary. Okay, so that's been countermanded. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and was it Jesus with the blind man mm -hmm. explained otherwise? Right, because um, the ancient people viewed these afflictions as uh, payback for some sin. So what um, what he's referring to is um, think back to uh, in the New Testament where Jesus was curing the blind man and his disciples said, well, who sinned? This man or his parents? And Jesus says, that's not the way things work. But the ancients said, any affliction must be payback for sin because that's how the pagans view their gods. Yeah. Um, it, and they aren't entirely mutually contradictory either. For example, an alcoholic, the sin passes from generation to generation. Yeah. They don't have good parenting. They don't have, and so on. Yeah. I mean, for different things. Um, likewise, someone is born blind because there's a punishment from God. Yeah, and um, alcoholism or child abuse continues until somebody breaks the cycle. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's another reason why we have to try to get to these kids as soon as we can. Because the kids that live in terrible households, if they don't have a good example, they may just continue these problems. Yeah, what you see. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, that's why um, the, the inner cities have such a problem because all these poor kids see is welfare. Yeah. They, they, don't see, they don't see any jobs available. They don't see anybody going out and working. So they just assume that this is the way it is. Yeah. And there, there's got to be a way to change that. Verses 19 through, no, actually the end, uh, through 22. It's talking about don't be greedy. Now, don't go and clean out your fields or your vineyards to the last item. Leave what's, what's left over for the, the poor and take care of the poor. Because God realizes that we're always going to have poor people. We've got to take care of them. I like that though. Don't pick the last olive from your trees, and yeah. that's a good rule to follow. Yeah. So. So, any questions about Deuteronomy twenty-two through twenty-four that I can try to answer? Tons of details. Yeah, tons of details, and they're but the and what we find out after we read them. And we analyze it means they all make sense. You know, God did this for a reason to keep his people healthy, keep his people married, um, and try to get people to not commit crimes because the penalties are so severe. All right, so we're going to have Deuteronomy 25, 26, and 27 next week. And we're, we're getting, we're in the home stretch. Remember that after Deuteronomy, we're going to go, we're going to read Matthew. So we're going to go into the New Testament to get a, have a change of pace, but also because Matthew wrote to the Jews. So we're going to see a lot of references to the Old Testament in Matthew, so it's going to be kind of fun. Okay? So we'll hang in there. We're almost done with Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy quoted more than any other Old Testament I don't know that for sure, Gary, but it wouldn't surprise me because it talks so much about the laws. Pardon? Bye, Jane. Yeah, Isaiah's, I love Isaiah. I can't wait till we get to that book.